My guest today is Jeffrey Palermo. Jeffrey, how you doing? I'm great. I'm great. Good well, to see you, Dave. Welcome to Ignite. Thank you very much. It's been a great conference. What do you do? So I'm the Chief Architect and CEO of Clear Measure in Austin, Texas, and we do a lot of DevOps architecture and DevOps automation for Microsoft uh, platform de development teams. Very cool. And I work for Microsoft, and I know that DevOps is important to us. We're, we're getting the message out about all the tools that Microsoft has, but we're having a conversation that maybe that message might be misdirected to some of the audience that's interested in DevOps. Is that, sure. is that a fair... Well, so our market, is that what you're saying? our market is in the, the mid-market space. And what that means is the people who are not quite as big as the Fortune 500. Right. And certainly these massive companies, they do have technology departments where they have ops and they have dev and they have many of them. And so there's a lot of interpersonal changes that are going on in this DevOps movement. That's certainly appropriate in that space. Okay. But there's a whole lot of teams out there where the it, it's not a, a divide between dev and ops because if something goes down in the middle of the night, the devs are getting a phone call. Forget the ticket system or any kind of routing. They're getting woken up uh, because it's, it's, it's a much more consolidated environment just on a day-to-day -day basis. I can totally relate to this. So years ago, my first job in IT, I was working for a small company and I was the computer guy. I wrote the software, I managed the networks, I was the help desk, and I was the guy they'd call on if something went broke on third shift and I had to come in and fix it. And yeah. that's, we didn't know what DevOps was, but I was in charge of deployment. I was in charge of fixing deployment issues as well. Right. And most developers work on small teams where they have to also support what they build. Okay. And even if there is, even if there is a system administrator or 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 some type of uh, similar skill set in the mix, um, if there's something wrong with the software system, that gets escalated really, really quickly. If it's not just a reboot the server type of thing, okay, it goes straight to the development team anyway. Uh, of course. Yeah. I also, that's that's another transition I learned when I, when I when I left that company, I became a consultant and I became a developer. I like development better than infrastructure. Right. And I thought originally. I could just write code, and then there would be another guy that would handle the the, the the security and the infrastructure and all that, and the deployment. That's really not true. If I had to, I found out very quickly. I had to understand that myself. Right. Uh, so, what, so what's uh, how does that affect the people like Microsoft that are building DevOps tooling? Is that are are we are we building it for? Both the enterprise and these small companies and mid-sized companies. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I think or is it I a, think the uh, the Azure DevOps Services team is doing a great job. That that product is phenomenal. It it really is a best of breed build and deployment system. Um, and when we when we go into a client and uh, assess whatever system that they have, we lay out a full pipeline plan for okay. a completely automated DevOps environment. And yes. and what that includes is and if you go online and search for DevOps, you'll, you'll oftentimes see a graphic that's an infinity sign or a sideways figure eight. Okay. And there's and there's seven or eight pictures and it all goes in a cycle. It's an extension of, of agile software development. But okay. It starts out with planning and then building the software or coding and then testing and then building the software and packaging it ready for deployment and then actually doing the deployment, configuring the environment, operating the system in a production environment, and then learning about how it's going and funneling that learning and that's back the into feedback, planning. and which is why it's a loop. Right, exactly. So all those topics are the DevOps topics, and that's, that's true whether you're said. whether you're a big enterprise or a mom and pop shop, right? That that same feedback loop occurs. It is. It is, and it, it it's a pretty straightforward setup for us when we go into these. Uh, and we're not talking about mom and pop shops, by the way. Mom oh. and pop shops don't do custom software. They're, they're oh. too small. They okay. can't afford custom software. Mid-sized companies that we're talking we're about. We're talking about really, really healthy companies, but comparatively, it's called mid-market. Okay. Because um, if you're if you're uh, 500 million in revenue, you're considered mid-market. Okay. You're not a Fortune 500 company. If you're right. a billion in revenue, you're, I mean, so uh, mom and pop shops are even even good sized ones are less than fifty million in revenue. Hmm. Um, even if they even if they have a good number of employees, 
And so the real small business doesn't even dabble in custom software. They just okay. use products. Right. So these are still healthy companies, but especially non-technology industries. Right. Warehouse, distributors, logistics, um, insurance. There's all kinds of industries that don't, their, their product or service isn't high tech by nature, but mm -hmm. they've had to create some custom software over time in order to compete in their field. Right. So they've hired developers. Uh -huh. And now they have a development team. Some of them uh, report to the CFO or some other type of executive right. who are just assigned to be over technology. Right. And maybe they've hired uh, a development manager of some sort, but but this totally different world from the enterprise where you have you know, seven seven directors of security and a group and an architecture center of excellence and all these other specialty groups that you can tap tap on. So there's there's more specialization in the big organizations, there's more people to throw at any problem, but are, are, are do these mid-sized companies, do they need to think about DevOps differently? They do, they or do. does now, that pipeline look different? Uh, it, it can be simpler, actually, okay. because there's, there's less historical technology and they can be more nimble and they can take advantage of new technologies quicker mm -hmm. because they typically don't have uh, just that, that large set of inertia that the okay. enterprises have. So they have an advantage, I think. Uh -huh. and, and so it starts with it starts with organizing their source control. Git is where it's at. So if, if, if folks are not in Git, it's really easy, pretty easy to move over. Uh -huh. Then they need a private build script so that they can run some type of build process locally. And then uh, when they commit code up to Azure repos, um, which is the, the new name under VSTS, they commit code there. The continuous integration build kicks off, runs the same private build script, plus some additional steps perhaps, additional testing that you might not run locally, and then packages up the, that application and all the components for uh, for packaging and, and pushing into NuGet, which is Azure Artifacts now. Okay. And then uh, the release hub under Azure Pipelines can pull those application components in the NuGet package an orchestrated deployment across a series of environments. Mm -hmm. And if it's a straight PaaS solution, like a website and Azure SQL, that's super straightforward. If it's more complex, has a lot more going into it, and maybe the software needs a virtual machine, then uh, you pull the extension from the marketplace and have Octopus deploy in the mix in order to configure those, those environments. And then hooking up the monitoring is important because not only do we need to know if exceptions happened or alerts need to fire off, but we need to stream back all of the logs of every part of that application into the same place so that we can develop a set of queries on top of those logs so that we always know what the application's actually doing. Mm -hmm. How powerful is it if you as a development team, one of these mid-market companies walk in and say, hey Bob, I noticed you were using the software and you had a problem using it. Can I help out with anything? Uh -huh. And he asks, how did you know that? <laughs> Magic. That's, that's what I do. <laughs> that's what. <laughs> <laughs> that's all he has to say. So that, this process you described—that sounds a lot like the process that the big companies would do. Is it? Is that any different from the way enterprises would would work? These large enterprises. The overall template is the same. Okay. Um, but in the enterprise, you have so much complexity that every one of those steps that I just outlined uh -huh. could be a, a month or a multi-month process just uh -huh. to get it configured. Okay. So it's just because the the historic progression of customs, they have, there's so many more dependencies, yeah. so many more things that have cropped up. It's probably worth pointing out that um, that when you describe it, that's a lot of steps and a lot of pieces that are working together, but there are tools that will not only build those pieces, like the monitoring, for example, uh, like the uh, building of a, a virtual machine or deploying a PaaS service. There are tools that can do, there are other tools that'll, like Octopus that can bring those together as well. There are. So there's that simplifies it for people that don't have monstrous budgets or huge staffs. Right, but the best of breed is um, Azure DevOps Services, yep. and then if you have a significant database of any sort, you're going to want to reach for the Redgate tools for SQL change management and the like. Okay. Uh, if you have complex deployments, um, now the Azure Pipelines Release Hub is getting better and better and better. Um, hmm. But Octopus Deploy has been deploying applications and configuring environments. They were the first movers. The the library of is so sophisticated okay. that. In, if you're if it's a new application and it's super simple, then you could deploy it straight to Azure with the tools right out of the box in the release hub. Okay. But it, you probably want to reach for Octopus Deploy as well. And then of course, the destination it's got to be Azure. 
It really be Azure. If it's a Visual right Studio, here, right here, unbiased, well, four stars. <laughs> well, it's not about a bias. It's, oh. it's not about a club or favorites. It's if you have a if you have a a, a custom system that's built with Microsoft technologies, yeah. it fits like a glove that's in fair. the Microsoft cloud. That's it fair. really does. You can make it work in AWS, but you're going to be doing a lot more work yourself. It doesn't fit like a glove like it does in Azure. Okay. And so if you just want to click a few buttons and have it work, that's how it goes in Azure. Very nice. Very cool. Is there anything we haven't talked about that we should have? Oh, there's so much to talk about. This <laughs> conference is so big. Oh, no, I'm on this topic, people. I mean. <laughs> um, I, I know you do a lot of speaking. Are you speaking somewhere in the near future? So I do have some speaking engagements coming up in the fall. The uh, Austin, Austin Cloud User Group. Okay. Uh, is one, and I think there's a smattering that, that is on my schedule, but they all kind of run together. Okay. I do sure. quite a lot of speaking about how to set up an environment for fast and high quality uh, development. Even before DevOps was a thing, I was in the, in the agile space kind of preaching um, extreme programming and test-driven mm -hmm. development, automated builds. Uh -huh. um, I have autom the, uh, the Azure DevOps podcast, is some a resource that people could check out? Is that your podcast? It is my podcast. Oh, how do people find that? Uh, search your favorite podcast directory okay. for Azure DevOps podcast. I will. iTunes, Google Play, or just or just search the web. Outstanding, Jeffrey. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. It's fun. My friends love technology.